Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, welcome. Welcome to the Fairies live show. How are you, Pip? Um, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm okay. Yes, I know how you're feeling. Mm. Today is a sad day. Yeah, today is a sad day, Pip. Do, do you want to tell the viewers why it's a sad day? You see, yeah. it's because uh -huh. Imam Ali was sing. struck yeah. with a sword by a naughty, naughty person <laughs> yeah. named Ibn Muljin. I know. What a horrible person. What a horrible person. But do you know what, Pip? Ibn Muljim, he actually used to re recite loads of Qur'an and do all his salahs. Don't you find that really strange? Hmm. Yes, but mm -hmm. just because someone prays yeah. and reads Qur'an, yeah. it doesn't mean they're always a good person. Ah. I mean, you do need the Qur'an yeah. to teach you about everything. Yeah. But it's the Imams who light the way. Ah, oh, that's very, very true. Nicely pointed out, Pip. So the Imams are like the lightens and they pave the path. They're like the walking and talking Quran, right? Yes. Yeah. And they show us how to behave because the Quran is, is a way of life and it teaches us how to live our life. But it's not very easy to learn from the Quran. So we have the 14 infallibles who teaches how to live. That's so, right. Yeah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, we're Alhamdulillah. so blessed. And, and yeah. Imam Ali yeah. is our first Imam. That is true. And he's so special Yeah. to you, me, uh -huh. and millions of other people. To everyone. All over the world. Ah, uh, you know, so many non-Muslims have even written loads of books about him and studied his, studied his life. Wow! Yeah, amazing, isn't it? Yeah, so it's like, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. Yeah. Because uh -huh. my mum yeah. was telling me uh -huh. that famous people yeah. like historians yeah. and writers. Uh huh. And, and even poets. And even poets. Oh, yeah. Like me. <laughs> I'm a poet and I don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. They have written books yeah. on Imam Ali oh. because they knew mm -hmm. he was an amazing person. Yeah. But what made him so different from everybody else? Oh, that's a very good question, Pip, because you said that he was also a human being like us, right? What made him different? Yes. Well, Pip, there's a lot of things that made him different. Well. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right so first of all when he was born we can call his birth a miracle do you know why let me tell you a story Pip. Please, please. so um do you know where he was born would you let me answer this question this yeah, time? yeah yeah which city was he born in because hmm. sometimes you ask me questions then you answer before <laughs> i answer i need to think okay well i'll give hmm. you a clue first he was born on the, was it 13th? Yeah, 13th of Rajab, just before Ramadan. And was it was born, in a very holy city. Was he born in... Yeah. Makkah! Yes, in Makkah indeed. Yay! Yeah, and what special building do we have in Makkah? Oh. It starts with a K. Ka. Yeah. It's not a cafe, no. No, that's not a holy building. <laughs> mm, depends if it's got holes in it. <laughs> mm. A cafe with holes. No, what other holy building or what holy building do we have in Mecca? Starting with a K. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah? what is it, Pip? The Kaaba. Yes, well done, Pip. It's the Kaaba. So, there was a group of people sitting just outside the Kaaba as they saw a lady called Fatima bint Asad. Do you know who that lady is? I think so. It's the mother of someone very special. Hmm. Go was on. it the mother of Imam Ali? Yes, exactly. Wow. But at this point, Imam Ali wasn't born. 
And they saw Fatima bint Asad walking towards the Kaaba. And she said, O oh God, I have faith in you and the prophets who listened to you and laid the first stone in, his, in this house. So she was talking about Prophet Abraham. Right. Who, who you know, built the Kaaba. Of course. And then she said, O oh God, please make it easy for me to have this baby. So she made a dua, she made a supplication, asking Allah to make it easy for her to have that baby. Then What's a supplication? A supplication is like um, uh, it's 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 like a it's like a conversation where where you ask something from Allah. So, for example, when when you're when you get home and you're really tired after school and you're like super hungry, yeah, tired like that, uh, you might ask your mom, mom. Can you please make me food? Um, pretty, pretty, please. And that's asking your mum. But is that how you ask your mum? Um, sometimes, yeah. Okay. Because because I like my mum's food. <laughs> <laughs> and, pretty, and, pretty, please. <laughs> with sugar on top. <laughs> but but yes. w essentially, everything comes from Allah. So so if you realize that everything is from Allah, the best thing you can do is. Ask Allah, because Allah loves people when they ask. So he, he even tells us to ask, like for example, he, told, he would tell the prophets to ask even for the salt in their food. That's how much he loves it when we ask from him. Wow. Yeah. So not like my mum who tells me to stop asking questions. No, it's really, really good to ask questions. I can questions. ask all the questions. <laughs> well, you need to gauge, if you're asking your mum the questions, then you need to gauge whether she can actually bear to listen to the questions. Because sometimes mummies do so much for us, they might get really tired, but Allah will never get tired of listening to us. He's so, always listening. That means I can ask Allah as many questions as I want. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, very good. Okay, so let me tell you what happened next. So after she made this supplication or yes. dua, the wall or the Kaaba actually opened up <gasps> and, and she was able to go inside the Kaaba and all the people watching and then, and then it closed again. So all the people that were watching, they're like, oh my God, this is so amazing. They were completely shocked. So what they did is they, were, they went home and, and they told their wives, they're like, oh my God, this happened. And Lady Fatima bint Asad needs your help and go and help her because she was, she was pregnant and she was, she was going to give birth. And she's, she was by herself and she entered the Kaaba and obviously she would need some sort of help and support to give birth. So all their wives and all the ladies went to the Kaaba wanting to help Fatima bint Asad, but the Kaaba wouldn't open up to them. And so they were really, really surprised. Wow. Yeah. How? This story is like a miracle. It is a miracle. And she was there for three whole days. That's a long yeah. birth. Yeah. So she was inside the Kaaba for three days. And then when she came out, she said, God has chosen me from among the ladies of Mecca. And he made me his guest in his house and gave me meals and fruits of heaven to eat. Subhanallah. Yeah. You know, Yeah. that is a little bit, a little bit, Yeah. like the story of Bibi Maryam. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, true. There's some connections, aren't there? Go on, expl explain what you mean by that. So, when I was told the story, Yeah. the prophet, sorry, um, um, well, kind of, Bibi Maryam's like a prophet in a way, yeah. but Bibi Maryam was given fruits. Yes. Just before um, she gave the immaculate birth. Yeah. You know, the Sheikh told me that, so obviously for three whole days without any food, she was in the Kaaba. Fatima bin Asad must have been eating something and, mm. and the something must have been fruits from heaven. I would love to try some fruits from heaven. Oh, yes. Yummy, yummy. It sounds so yummy, right? Yes, but also. Yeah. The other connection. Yeah. Is that it's a miracle. Yeah, exactly. Because like Nabi Isa, yeah. born of a miracle, uh -huh. Imam Ali, uh -huh. born in the Kaaba, yeah. is like a miracle. Yeah, and you know, so if Imam Ali was born in the Kaaba, which is the house of? God. 
Do you know that Imam Ali Islam is called the friend of God? I didn't know that. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. Can you see the connection? So he was born in the house of God and Allah calls him the friend of God. And that's why we say Aliyun Waliullah, meaning the friend of Allah. Wow. Yeah. Can I be a friend of Allah? Insha'Allah, we should pray, especially in these nights of Qadr, that we can develop the characteristics so that we can become more like Imam Ali and that we can become the friends of Allah. Insha'Allah. Insha and one good way to do it is to become friends of each other. So for example, if, if you see a monster who's a friend of Allah, yes. then you can become his friends and that will then you will come, become closer to Allah yourself. Insha'Allah. Insha'Allah. Well, yeah. let me ask you another question. Okay. So, yeah. if Bibi Fatima uh -huh. was in the Kaaba, yeah. But was who was looking after her? Ah, I think that some angels were sent down to look after her. Hmm. Well then, Yeah. did she hear any voices? You know, when she came out, the people asked her, what is the name of this baby? Because there was so much Noor. Do you know what Noor is? Mm, no, tell me. Noor is like a special light that only very, very special people that Allah loves so much has. So like the Prophet, he had so much Noor. So when people saw him, even from far, his face would light up. And Imam Ali Islam, as a baby, Fatima bin Asad must have been holding him and there was so much light emanating from his face. So people asked her, what have you named this baby of yours? And she said, When I was in the Kaaba, I heard a hidden voice call, Name this child Ali. Wow. So they named him Ali. Subhanallah! Uh -huh. That's like a message right from God. Yeah, exactly. And he was known as Ali ibn Abu Talib. Can you guess why? Why? Because... In those days, we used to name people based on their father's name. So Ali ibn means Ali, son of, and what do you think the rest of the sentence means? Son of? Son of? Abu? Abu Talib. Talib. Yes. His father. Exactly, his oh, father. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh -huh. if I applied that to you, yeah. you would be what? I would be, uh, this is a funny one actually. My name is Muhammad Ali and my father's name is Hussein Ali and his father's name is Muhammad Ali. So I'll be Muhammad Ali ibn Hussein Ali ibn Muhammad Ali. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Muhammad Ali squared. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. <laughs> um, and you know, so Abu Talib alayhi yes. salam, uh, he, he was a very, very close companion of Rasulullah and he used to take care of the Prophet so much when the Prophet was younger. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Yeah, he was a really, really nice person. I love how the community used to help bring up the children. Yeah, yeah, that's a very, very good point. And all the children used to go in the playground and play together. And that's how they used to create really strong bonds. I wish we could be more like that. Oh, well, in Monsterland, do you guys play a lot in the playground together? Hmm. You see, the problem is yeah. there's a lot of division. Oh, division? Yes. What do you mean by that? So, yeah. people stick to their own colours. Oh, so do you only play with blue monsters? Unfortunately. But Penny told me that you guys used to play together when you were kids. Yes, yeah. I try. Yeah. I even try play with the red monsters. Oh, that's good. But yeah. sometimes people tease us. Oh, that's not nice. Not good. What do you do when people tease you, Pip? When people tease me, yeah. I ask Allah for guidance. Oh, wow. SubhanAllah. That's a very, very good strategy. I like yes. that, Pip. How to beat them all up. No. <laughs> no, Pip. No? I'm sure that's not what Allah wants you to do. Oh. That's not a solution. You know what? We have a caller on the line. Salaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam. What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm the... Uh -huh. What's your name? My name is Ahmed Raza. Ahmed Raza? Ahmed Raza! Oh, yeah. Assalamu alaikum, Ahmed Raza. Assalamu alaikum! <laughs> Wa alaikum as -salam. How's your day going, Ahmed Raza? 
I'm good. Yeah? How's your Ramadan been? What's the favorite thing about Ramadan so far? It's, it's good. Yeah? Have you been to any awesome iftars? Yeah. Yeah? What was the nicest thing you've eaten? Um... What do you Copy say? Copy that noise! You, sorry, say again. Surah Yasin? Yeah. I think he said, yeah. I'm not interested in food, I read Surah Yasin! <laughs> That's really, really good. I am so proud of you. Wow. You know, we were talking about um, praying to Allah and playing with each other. What's your favorite thing to play with? Do you have any favorite toys? Did he disappear? Maybe he's gone to recite Maybe Surah Yasin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very pious. Oh, mashallah. Ahmed, are you still there? Can I read Surah Yasin? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, would you like to read the first few verses of Surah Yasin? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Shall we listen closely? Please. Okay. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan Thank you so much, Ahmed. Thank you so much, Ahmed. That was so beautiful and really, really brave of you to actually recite su parts of Surah Yasin. Thank you. Thank you so much. And salams to all your family. Please remember us in your du'as, inshallah. Khudafis. Khudafis. Oh, mashallah. Wow. 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 He really enjoyed reciting, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so impressed. I wish that more kids could be just like him and could recite Surah Yasin just like that. So confidently and with their hearts. In Indeed. Yeah. Now. Yeah. I had another question. Okay. Go ahead. So. Yeah. If. Uh huh. Imam Ali was born in the Kaaba. Yes. Question one. Okay. Question one. Has anyone else been born there? <gasps> Good question, Pip. No. Not a single person has been born in the Kaaba. Ever. Not even. Not even one more, because Imam Ali al Islam was that special. He's the only one. Gosh. Yeah. So, when I am grown up, yeah, and I go and do Hajj, uh -huh. inshallah, inshallah, I'll remember, yeah, that Imam Ali was born here. He, right, that's right, in the Kaaba. Every time I look at the Kaaba. Ah, uh, you know, I've heard that just looking at the Kaaba is ibadah. Yeah. It bother just by looking. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, maybe not looking at me, but looking at your parents, especially your mother, out of love, that's also ibadah. And especially in this holy month, um, sleeping, breathing, even your breath. So looking at your mother and looking at the Kaaba is even more rewarded in this holy month. How amazing. Allah must be so merciful to just give out rewards like that so easily. Amazing. Uh-huh. Better than buy one, get one free. <laughs> yeah, but you could say that. Well, I yeah. do feel amazing when I hear all this. Uh-huh. But yeah. I do feel sad too. Oh. Especially yeah. when people we love yeah. leave us. Oh. That's you so always true. feel like you want to see them, yeah. find out 
if you could see them one more time. Oh. But you can't. Yeah, you know that is true. And you know, I think there's someone else on Super Shex that might feel the same thing as you, Pip. Really? Yeah. Should we go and join them to find out? Please. Okay. Over to you, the Super Shex. Assalamu alaikum dear children and welcome to Super Sheikhs. I'm Big Sheikh Hassan. And I'm Little Sheikh Hussein. That's correct. Uh, thank you for sending in your question. My grandma died a few weeks ago. Can she come back alive? Because I really miss her. Really, really sorry that your nana died. Um, Hussein, do you know the answer? Do we come back alive after we die? We come back alive when only for judgment. Exactly. So every human being has a specific time frame where they live and then they have to die. So, for example, every good thing comes to an end. Unfortunately, your Nana's time has passed uh, and I'm really sorry for that. But uh, don't worry because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to revive every single person on Judgment Day. So they will be judged and see if they did good, they go to heaven. But if they have done bad, they go to hell. So, your Nana, I'm pretty sure she did very well in, in this life and she's going to go to heaven, inshallah. Uh, and you, if you do good in this life, you'll go to heaven as well. So you can see your Nana in heaven. What's heaven like? Heaven has everything. It has, exactly. Um, it has cakes. It has everything. Gold, money. Exactly. Everything you could think of and imagine is in heaven. So everything you would want, it gets there quickly. Right, this, like that. Anything you want. For example, if I instantly want mango juice, it appears in front of me straight away. That's how heaven is like. And you have rivers of milk and honey and a lot of things. It's a beautiful place. And also, the if you eat a fruit, it's whole again everything you eat you take a bite but it's still whole you take a bite and it's still whole it does it never decreases anything you want in heaven is limitless right unlimited unlimited so your nana inshallah will go to heaven but if you do good you'll see your nana in heaven as well right yep and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that in the Quran that if you do good, you go to heaven and you'll see every other person that did good in heaven. Right? Yep. But if you do bad, where do you go? Hell. Hellfire. But we have also been promised that you'll be only going to hellfire for a short time and then eventually you go to heaven because you believed in Allah, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet and the Imams. And the Imams. As long as you believe in those, you are promised to go to heaven eventually. Right? But this doesn't mean that you're allowed to do bad. You still have to be good, at least to the extent that you have to try. Right? Yep. Exactly. So, you'd have to do good to go to heaven. But if you do bad, you go to hell. Right? Yeah. But never mind that. You'll be good. You have to try your best. If you will be good, you'll see your Nana again. In yep. heaven, inshallah, yep. right? Yep, yep, Exactly. So what did we talk about so far? We talked about we can revive again and uh, and you can see your nana again. Exactly. My grandfather passed away a couple of years ago, so I'm trying my best to be good. So I can see him, inshallah, in heaven as well someday, right? Inshallah. Inshallah. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any other question, do send it in. And welcome back. <laughs> oh, you know, Pip, yes? I really, really want to go to heaven, and I'm trying so hard because then I can meet not only just the people that have passed away, but even the imma, like the prophets and the imams, because they'll be in heaven too. Really? Yeah, yeah. We can get to meet them there. Inshallah, I really want to. Wow. Yeah. And and you know, yes. these nights, the nights of Qadr, yes. the Laylatul Qadr, yes. 
the, your, your destiny or your decree is written. So for example, you can ask Allah, um, can, you, can you make sure that in this year, I, I achieve this, this and that? And maybe Allah will make sure we do, if it's really? good for us, yeah. Wow. We can change our destiny in these nights. All we have to do is just ask Allah. So it's like making New Year's resolutions. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. New Year's resolutions, mm. except Allah's on your side. Wow. Yeah. And when He's on your side, yeah. I don't think you need anybody else. <laughs> that's a very good point, Pip. Very clever. But you know, yeah. I still struggle with the idea uh -huh. of death. Ah, oh, yeah. It's really hard. Uh huh. You know, my. Grandma, she recently yeah. passed away. Did she? Yeah. Oh. And it yeah. made my mum really sad. Uh huh. Well, you know, in our religion, we're supposed to mourn or be sad for at least 40 days. Really? Yeah. But something that death should do is when you see someone pass away in your family members or some one of your friends' family members, then you should remember death because. We should all remember that one day we're all gonna die because this life is temporary. Even me! Even you, Pip, even I. Oh, oh that Did book you... fell. What Look book is that. that? It's a nice book. It's a book about you. It's oh, Pip's really? First Fast. Oh, Pip's First Fast! Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, what a lovely book. Um, yes, yeah. yes. Shall I tell you more about Imam Ali? Alayhi Please do. Okay, so Imam Ali, alayhi salam, as you know, was the bestest of friends with Rasulullah. I don't even know if that's a real word, bestest of friends. But he was definitely bestest of besties. friends. Besties! Yeah, they were besties. And Rasulullah used to go to the cave of Hira and meditate. And that's where he used to speak to Allah. Wow. Yeah. Um, quick question. Yeah. What is meditate? Mm, meditate. Uh, there's many definitions of meditate. But the Prophet used to ask questions like, why am I here? Where did I come from? Where am I going? What's the purpose in life? I often ask myself why I'm here. Mm -hmm. That's very good. So do I. We should all do that. It's really, really good. But Because sometimes I wonder. Yeah. What do you wonder? Why I'm stuck with you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, no, no. Uh, Only joking. Should I feel sorry for you, Pip? <laughs> Okay, but the anyway, <laughs> yes, 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 sorry. Awkward moment. So, awkward moment. Uh, the Prophet was very, very special because his meditation was extra special because there was a special angel that used to come and speak to him. So when we meditate, we might not get a reply. We might only talk to ourselves and talk to Allah, but the Prophet used to speak to a specific angel and that angel's name starts with a J. The J. Yeah. J. Or a Jib. J. Or a J. Can you, can you guys guess who it is at home? If you guys want to call in and let us know. Yeah, yeah? I think I need help with this one. Uh-huh. Maybe we can ask the next caller. Okay, we can ask the next caller. Shall, shall I leave it a secret for now? I think so. Okay, so, and when he used to go to meditate, only two people know about this. Uh, it was Bibi Khatija, who was the wife of the Prophet, and Imam Ali alayhi salam, who was his bestie. Bestie! Yeah, and... Shall I tell you a little story? Ah, oh, let me get out my storybook. Hmm. So, this story is about the invitation to embrace Islam. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was ordered by Allah to invite his family members to embrace Islam. So, of course, he must have been speaking to Jibra'il. <gasps> oh no, I said it. I said the word. Oh no! He gave it away. I gave it away. Angel Jibra'il. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pip. Uh, Do you think they were still cool? Maybe, maybe they'll call just to say hello. Inshallah. And they could, if they did know the answer, then they could call in and let us know that they did. Do, they yes, did know yes, the answer. Yes. Um, so after Jibrail, Angel Jibrail came yes. and spoke to the Prophet. Yes. Um, he told the Prophet that he should invite all his relatives because now his mission was to now tell people the truth to spread Islam. But before he actually went out and started telling people about Islam, he had to invite his family first, because family always comes first. Of course! So, Imam Ali ibn Abu Talib salam, according to the advice of the Prophet, peace be upon him, invited about 40 people 
of the Prophet's family to his home. Although the food was very little, they all ate enough to get filled up. How? Well, if there's 40 people, yeah. a little food, yeah. how did they fill them up? You know, I'm not sure, but I can have a guess. I think that, well, first of all, Imam Ali Islam is known for eating very little because he's very humble. I see. Yeah, he doesn't eat like extravagant food. He doesn't go to the chicken cottage and order five ice creams. Oh, no! Like, like You've I like to do. exposed me! <laughs> he eats like dry bread and just plain water. Wow. Yeah. And also, I think that because it was the Prophet's house, there was a lot of barakah. Ah. Yeah. So, barakah. little food went a long way. Ah. After the meal was over, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, spoke to those present saying, O oh, sons of Abdul Muttalib, God has ordered me to invite you to embrace Islam and get you introduced to it. Whoever, having believed in my prophethood, promises to help and assist me shall be my brother, deputy and successor, and my caliph. The Prophet, peace be upon him, repeated this sentence three times, but no one except Imam Ali ibn Abu Talib salam, gave a positive response. As many times as the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, addressed the people present, nobody except Imam Ali salam, answered. And Imam, nobody at all? Nobody, no, nobody stood up except Imam Ali. And he would stand up and promise to help him every time and announce his faith. This wow. is the very reason why Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, This is Ali, is, and Ali is my brother, the leader after me, so listen and do what he says and obey his orders. Wow. Will the real successor please stand up? <laughs> That would be Imam Ali alayhi salam. Yes. Oh, you know, Imam Ali alayhi salam would support the Prophet everywhere in all matters of life, whether that was inside the mosque, inside his private house, and even in the battlefield. Wow. Yeah. That's like, well, you said it. Yeah. He's his bestie. Yeah, exactly. You know, I've got some really cool stories about some battles that took place at the time. Subhanallah. Yeah. I mean, Imam Ali is amazing. Yeah. He was so brave he and was. strong. Yeah. And I bet his enemies were really, really scared of him. Yeah, I'm sure they were. Imam Ali Islam was known. He was a master of theology and he was also the master of the mystical realities. Like, if you were to look at his du'as, so if, if you recite, for example, the Munajat of Imam Ali Islam, which is like a whispered conversation, that he has between him and Allah, we, yeah, like this. like this. We can understand what kind of relationship Imam Ali Islam had with Allah, but also with other people. For example, on the battlefield, there's a story. The Battle of Hunayn took place, right? And there were so many non-Muslims and enemies of Islam. And what they did, there were so many of them and so strong that they all surrounded the Muslims who were very small in number and all the Muslims got really really scared so they got so scared of their lives and they forgot about Rasulullah they forgot about protecting him no and, way. They, and they ran for their lives ah! but there was one person who stood back to protect the life of Rasulullah guess who that is was that you Pip <laughs> maybe <laughs> no Pip you weren't even present you don't remember oh. the battle of Hunayn do you no I got <laughs> excited I got caught up in the <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. It means you have love for the Prophet. Indeed. Yeah. And so it was Imam Ali. Yes, Imam Ali. Imam Ali. Ali. Imam Ali Islam stood courageously and he didn't let anyone get past so that he would protect Rasulullah. And that's exactly what happened. So wow. even to an extent where the enemies started getting scared, even, even though they were only fighting one person. Wow. Yeah. So subhanAllah. Yeah. He is really brave i know and really strong and there's another story yes. have you had the story of the gate of khaybar no so there was another battle called the uh, battle of khaybar where basically the muslims they were kind of stuck and they needed to open a gate and it's it's said in history that normally it takes 
Some narrations say 20, some narrations say even 42 strong grown men would together move the gate just to open the gate. 44 men. Wow. But Imam Ali salam single-handedly picked up the gate and threw it. No way. Imagine. No way. Yeah. And you know why he did that? Why? Because there was a trench and, they, and the soldiers needed to pass the trench. And if there was nothing to pass on top, then they would have fallen in the trench and they would have lost the battle. So you don't want to be stuck in a trench if you're a soldier. Of course not. Yeah, in a ditch. You don't want to be stuck in a ditch. So wow. Imam Ali Islam picked up the gate, threw it on top of the ditch. So it acted like a bridge and everyone could pass the bridge. Subhanallah. Yeah. Wow, Imam Ali, he's like the best superhero. Exactly. And you know, he was asked, Afterwards, how on earth did he get that strength to pick up the gate that normally 42 strong grown men would take to pick it up? SubhanAllah! And he, how said, did he? he said that it wasn't his strength. He what didn't, was it? He, he didn't go to the gym every day. I was going to see. <laughs> was he having protein shakes? <laughs> no, and he didn't eat plenty of meat either. What oh. he did do though, is he used to pray a lot. And wow. he was faithful. So, uh -huh. does that mean prayers is like going to the gym? It's much better than going to the gym, Pip. Better than the gym? Yeah, much, much better. Wow. Yeah, because praying, if you do it wholeheartedly, it helps you become faithful and muttaqeen, which means you love Allah and you trust Allah. Ah. And that's exactly why Allah gave him the strength to pick up the gate of Khaybar. Wow. Yeah, mashallah. That's He's amazing. so brave and courageous. That is amazing. Yeah. Really? Uh -huh. I, I feel like I want to be just like Imam Ali. Ah, inshallah. I hope we all want to be just like him. He's our superhero indeed. Inshallah. Inshallah. Are there any other stories? Um, well, there's loads, but I'm kind of tired because I'm fasting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah. So, um, hmm. Let me think then. So if Imam Ali yeah. was the bravest and strongest and all his enemies were scared of him, yeah. then do you think yeah. I should be more like Imam Ali? Yes, Pip. Yeah. Of course you should. Hmm. Uh -huh. But I don't want everyone to be scared of me. Oh, no. Do you think that people were scared of Imam Ali alayhi salam? Well, no. No. No, they weren't. They loved him because he was so kind. Wow, so not only was he brave, uh -huh. strong, yeah. but he was also kind. He was super, super kind. SubhanAllah. That reminds me though. Yes. Something that is brave and scary, but not as kind. What's that? Sharks. <gasps> Sharks? Yeah. Where, where, where? <laughs> come back, come back. No, I know someone that might know a bit more about sharks. His name is Ibn Haytham and, and oh. he's got a magical telescope. Telescope? Yeah. I, I like Ibn Haytham. Uh-huh. Do you want to introduce him? Okay. Yeah. Here is my friend Ibn Haytham with... I look, I see. On I look, I see. Yeah, I look, I see. I look, I see. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> My! Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. God is great, I tell you. He is great. Oh, oh. assalamu alaikum. Uh, welcome, my explorer friends. I'm Ibn Haytham, and this is my marvelous telescope. It's special because it goes back in time, and I can visit any place you can think of. I sit here night after night admiring Allah's creation. 
Oh, what's that sound? Come, let's take a look and see. Subhanallah. Oh, what do we have here then? Well, it's the scary but amazing world of the sharks. Now, don't be worried. In some form or other, sharks have been around for 400 million years. And I know that is a long time. And they are obviously the top hunters and killers of the world's oceans. Even before dinosaurs roamed the earth, sharks hunted throughout the oceans. They're such good survivors that they had little need to evolve in the last 150 million years. That means they haven't needed to change much to survive. There are over 400 types of sharks, you see, and at least 30 of these have been known to attack humans. <laughs> Some are as small as like six inches and others grow to be 45 in length. Longer than a red London bus, would you believe? <laughs> this shark is huge and look at its gills. Those marks on the side of the shark, without them, sea animals wouldn't be able to breathe in water for too long. Children and grown-ups are fascinated by sharks, and rightly so. I mean, just look at them. They look terrifying to me, but they are magnificent. Even though this shark looks harmless, happily swimming along the sand, you can be sure that if he saw you or I, he would just go for it. <laughs> nom, 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 <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, but look, sharks have the most powerful jaws on the planet. Unlike most animals' jaws, both the shark's upper and lower jaws move. A shark bites with its lower jaw first, and then its upper, it tosses its head back and forth and back and forth to tear loose a piece of meat which it swallows whole. Oh. Each type of shark has a different shaped tooth though, depending on their diet. I mean, this shark is a great white, obviously, and you can tell he's a carnivore. A meat eater, that is. Just by looking at those sharp, sharp, pointy teeth. But their skeleton, interestingly, is made of cartilage instead of bone, which means sharks can bend into all sorts of positions. A bit like a gymnast, yeah. Hmm. And these shark teeth look like daggers almost. So stay back. <laughs> a shark may grow and use over 20,000 teeth in its lifetime. Yes. Do you know why though? Well, sharks never run out of teeth. Mm. In fact, if sharks were to lose a tooth, they would just be replaced by the rows and rows of backup teeth. <laughs> if only we had the same thing. Less trips to the dentist, I can tell you. Normally, sharks eat alone. But sometimes, one feeding shark attracts another. They swim up as quickly as possible and will begin to try and get a piece of the prey. They bite wildly at anything that gets in their way even each other. I don't think they're very good at sharing, do you? <laughs> Their skin is made of denticles instead of ordinary fish scales. Their denticles are constructed like hard, sharp teeth and help to protect the shark from injury. Not all sharks are fierce carnivores, by the way, though. Some are quite harmless. Oddly enough, the most harmless sharks tend to be the largest, though. The basking shark, the whale shark, and the megamouth sharks are friendly and calm, so nothing to worry about there. These huge sharks eat plankton, a tiny shrimp-like creature found in the ocean. Uh, to do this, though, they swim forward with their mouths wide open. Gill rakers at the back of their throat strain the tiny food from the water. The same way you drain pasta in a strainer. <laughs> or maybe your mother. Or maybe your grandmother. But you understand the point. <laughs> Here is a whale shark looking for plankton to eat. 
Look at its spotty skin too. Wow, sharks truly do come in all shapes, sizes, colours and patterns too. Think sharks are dangerous though, hey? The most dangerous sharks are great white sharks. The tiger shark, the hammerhead shark, the mako shark and the bull shark. On average, there are only about 100 shark attacks each year. I say only, I know that sounds a lot, but the point is, there's 100 shark attacks each year and only 10 of those result in a human death. Which again, I know doesn't sound too great, but relatively speaking, you know. Uh, but what do sharks think of us? I know, I know that we're scared of them, but they are just as scared of us too, would you believe? And rightly so. People kill thousands of sharks in a year for sport, can you believe, and for food. Shark skins are used to make things, you know, just like the skin from cows helps make leather jackets. Up until the 1950s, shark livers were used to make people feel better. So, who's really the dangerous predator then? Them or us? I mean, one of the reasons that sharks are such amazing predators is because they have such super senses. I mean, they have an extra good sense of smell too. Some sharks have eyes like a cat. A mirror-like layer in their eye allows them to see better in the water. This allows the shark to hunt in clear seas or murky water. They really do look like cat's eyes. When you think about it, sharks are scary, but some of them are kind of nice too. <laughs> so, subhanallah, sharks are fascinating then, aren't they? Very interesting creatures. Allah, as I say, has created this wonderful world and everything in it. It's been said that it's impossible to see the whole world in our lifetime, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't try. <laughs> I'm going to continue exploring the wondrous world and creation that Allah has given us, including the whole universe. Until next time, my friends, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Those sharks look so scary. Are you shivering, Pip? I'm so scared! <laughs> You're still shivering, come on. I don't like sharks. They're on a screen, Pip. They're not going to come and <sighs> eat you. <gasps> don't do that! <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I think I was scarred by Jaws when I was a child. I walked in the room, someone was playing it. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Oh, uh, Pip, you shouldn't watch scary movies. It will scare you. And then when well, you grow up, you'll be scared of sharks for no reason. Well, this is what I mean. I didn't try. I walked in the room. Uh -huh. I haven't been swimming since. <laughs> I love swimming, Pip. You should try it out. You should face your fears. Oh, inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> oh. 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 Okay, okay. All right, all right. Let's get ourselves back together. Please. <sighs> okay, cool. Because I was going to say, Yeah. as much as I like the sharks, Yeah. Imam Ali. Yeah. Tell me. Uh huh. Imam Ali's piety. Yes. So. Uh huh. I want to concentrate on my prayers. Ah, okay, Pip. That's very good. It's very difficult. Yeah. So, Imam Ali, I doubt he had any problems. Hmm. I don't think he had any problems concentrating on prayers, no. But he can teach us a lesson or two because he was so pious. And you know, even to an extent that when he was praying, yes. it was said in the Battle of Sifin, so this is another battle. Okay. In the Battle of Sifin. It's a lot of battles. I know, that's what I think. Every time I read history, it's like so many battles back in the day. It's so sad that they had to do so, many, so much fighting hmm. because they had so much knowledge. And if they spent time fighting, they, they couldn't teach people. True. Yeah, it's really sad. Hmm. But so in the Battle of Sefin, someone yes. must have shot an arrow because back then there wasn't guns, they used to use arrows and spears. So someone must have shot Imam Ali salam, in the thigh and, and the wound was so deep that you couldn't just simply pull it out because most arrows, men back then were so brave, they just pull out the spear, uh, sorry, the arrow. 
But this was so, so deep, you couldn't just pull it out. So they asked Imam Hassan Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. So you see, because I'm trying my best yeah. to pray more. Yeah. And sometimes I get really tired. Uh -huh. And I can't even stand. Oh, really? Or concentrate properly. Oh. So how, with an arrow in your leg, yeah. would you continue? Oh, no, no, no. So it's not about how he continued fighting. So Imam Ali Hassan was very, very hurt. But what Imam Hassan did say, so they went to Imam Hassan and they consulted him for some advice. And they were like, how would we get this arrow out without making sure that he doesn't feel so much pain? Because it was unbearable pain. I can imagine. So Imam Hassan alayhi salam said, when my father is praying, then take out the arrow. Because he knew when his father Imam Ali alayhi salam would be in prayer, he would forget about all the pain in this world, even the physical pain in his leg. And that's exactly what they did. He was praying his salah. Yes. And, and they just pulled out the arrow. And Imam Ali Islam didn't even feel, feel a thing. Imagine. So like yeah. prayers for Imam Ali. Yeah. It's like general anesthetic. Ah. It's like, it's like, it's like a medicine yeah. that makes him feel nothing. Y yeah, yeah, you could say that. Well, I think it's more of like, uh, because he has such a strong connection with Allah, it's like he's completely immersed in his prayer. And that's all that's in his mind, to the extent that his soul is so connected to Allah, that it's, it's no longer connected to his body as much. Does that make sense? Kind of, yes. Uh -huh. So it's like he's travelled beyond yeah. the physical. Yes, exactly. But, but for us, it's yes. very difficult to achieve. So, so one advice that the Sheikh gave me, because I struggle with concentrating my prayer too, so Pip, you're not alone. And, okay, good. And if you because guys, I got worried that yeah, I was bad. No, especially in these nights of uh, Laylatul Qad, where we pray so much, it's difficult to constrain your Salah, right? Yes. But what the Sheikh told me to help me was to think about the actions that I do outside of Salah. So, for example, if I'm remembering Allah throughout my entire day, yes. then it's going to be much easier for me to concentrate in my salah. But if I don't think about Allah outside of my prayers, for example, if I go out and do naughty things and I, don't, I do things that Allah dislikes, mm -hmm. then in my salah, I'm just going to be thinking about other things and my mind's just going to wander off. Wander off. Here. That's true, that's true. Mm. Good advice, good advice, oh, Bev. Thank you. Hmm, I think I might need to take notes. Yeah. <laughs> well, Pip, what have we learned today? Oh, yeah. we have learned a lot. Yeah. Oh, well, so mm -hmm. we learned firstly about the miracle uh -huh. of Imam Ali. Yes. And how he was born. Where was he born? In the Kaaba. In the Kaaba, yeah, that's right. And uh -huh. we learned about how he was so Brave! Yes, super, super brave. He was our superhero. Yes, yeah. and so strong. So strong and courageous. But also yeah. very kind. Very, very kind and knowledgeable. And knowledgeable. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And <laughs> yeah. he was so, so pious uh -huh. that he had a special connection to God. Yeah, he was in love with Allah. And you know, we should also be exactly the same as him, especially in these holy nights. And before we leave, I yes. want to ask you guys at home, Please. if you guys enjoy watching our show, then you should pray for us because we pray for all the children around the world, whether you watch us or not. So we should always remember each other in our du'as. Indeed. All right, until next time. Ma'asalam. Ma'asalam.